Okay, Dave. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, second part for Mary. And I hope it's as good as the last part. Okay? Cheers. Welcome back. I hope you're ready to go further down my rabbit hole. I'm not sure what you're going to think of it, but it's um, where it's drawn me particularly. One of the interesting things we found out is how frequency can change us energetically, but also the surroundings. And what was fascinating about this particular incident, it was in Adelaide a number of years ago, and a beautiful young man, a musician, and he understands, it's, he's, he's got a website called Sacred Resonance. And what he was saying was that it's how higher intelligence um, left humanity with musical cues and frequency patterns encoded in ancient temples. So we can use them to create the positive contact culture. And this is a performance he did, which is fascinating because there's so much that we don't see that is going on. And to say that, I'm going to show you this. This was a conference, as I say, in Adelaide. And Darren was actually talking about how his music can bring in different beings. And he was particularly talking about the light beings. We had a digital camera available. And there we are all sitting quite happily watching him. And someone was actually, thank you, someone was actually um, taking digital film of him as he was playing. Now, first of all, I'm going to play um, what he actually was playing. And then I'm going to show you what the digital cameras um, conveyed to us from him playing this. Now you can see something really interesting is going on here. Look at this up here and other energies down here. That was the first, first one. Here's the second one. Really quite dramatic. Here's the third one. You can't see Darren at all. And that was him playing that music, that Hebrew song, his sacred song. Ribbons of light, light beings. I astrally visited the large ship with many other souls. There were a huge variety of beings. They were playful and incredibly wise and were able to shift their form at will from a humanoid shape to a ribbon of light. As I saw them, they seemed to be composed of effervescent bubbles of energy. Josh. Really interesting, isn't it? So what are we seeing? Are we actually seeing the image sometimes of that being? Or are we seeing what they actually want, us, want to show us? And maybe that many of them can change their form. So we have to be very careful about what we're judging when we look at their form. This is just an interesting little anecdote. This lady I know very well. She had this piece of artwork here for over 10 years. And when there is a wake-up call, it's really quite interesting. After 10 years, all of a sudden, she got up one morning and noticed there was this strange face on the picture. She's a very, very um, intelligent lady, and she ended up after she gave up with skeptics who hadn't got a clue, 
She tried a forensic art specialist who determined there was no other painting beneath the current one. The face is seen to be to the right of the painting and only appears on the surface at certain angles. It's not painted by the artist. And this was an Aboriginal artist in Western Australia that painted this, who was no longer with us, but his wife said he never, ever did anything like this. And she now feels it's a, a time that she's being told to start waking up a little bit more. So it happens in a myriad of ways. One of the interesting things one young man told me was that crop circles affect human DNA. And for those croppies around here, I'm sure many of them feel similarly because they know they have felt different after being in a crop circle. And that this is what he said, that the Syrians say that by entering a crop circle affects the DNA in the same way Masaru Emoto explains messages in water. The scaries made them. Two small children from different parts of the world both use the term the scaries made them. And this is what a boy of three, uh, heart, well, three and a half, really, from the UK, his mother said, Scary comes when he's asleep and takes him through a hole with lots of light. They play, watch TV, and, have, and play games. They touch him all over like a doctor. The scary's house is up there in the sky. And this was another really interesting one. She said, I was looking at crop circles, and my son said, Mum, the scary's drew those. He looked at them for days. Some were more significant, and he wanted me to draw them. Now, this is a three-and-a-half-year-old child. This is what Tracy said about her own experience about the crop circles. I had an experience of a crop circle making them through a dream. I found myself floating above the landscape, hills, fields, and crops, noticing the orbs floating next to me, and I realized I was in the form of a ball of energy consciousness with other orbs. I realized I was headed for a field, and there was an amplification of energy, a joyful, playful action. The grass moved and arranged swiftly. I know that as I thought and felt, the field would arrange itself accordingly. A beautiful communication between myself and the orb consciousness of the earth herself as a reflection of vibrational fields below. Some are sacred symbols and related to star systems. Some contain within them are maps to create alternate power sources or mathematical formula. And some sacred areas of importance on Earth was her understanding of the crop circles. The script from the light beings that Mike Oram under hypnosis drew, as you can see here, it's really interesting how some of this script seems to be echoed now in the crop circles. So let's go swiftly. Secret school. Um, I can see my spelling needs to be sorted out here. Um, remembering the journey outside time was another step. He wrote this book and was laughed at when he first actually um, produced the book. What do you mean there's schools on craft? And what he described was one of the lessons he had on the craft as a young boy when he remembers going to a specific field. And he learned this, nine lessons involved in the manipulation of time because learning how to use time as a tool is the key to reaching higher consciousness and a real relationship with the beings. Is he the only one? No. Many, many people um, around the globe have told me similar things. And these are the syllabus that some of them have found that they learnt from quantum physics, the holographic nature of the universe, the non-linear nature of time and space, awareness and connection to all sentient life, levitation, skills off-world, understanding spatial geometry of thought, how to operate multidimensionally, multidimensionally in states of consciousness, like Lee was talking about with the energy beings, taught how to communicate, interpret, and interact with interdimensional and other non-human intelligences, just as Lee described, out-of-body training, telekinesis, telepathy, and mind melds, multidimensional ecology, manifestation of directed thought and emotion, healing skills, working with energy, the true history of human origins and informed of their own star heritage, time travel, teleportation, the true nature and source of universal spirituality, remote influencing, I could go on. They're just some of the subjects children are taught on the craft as young as two or three years old. Because here is one here. This gentleman, Frederick from Queensland, said, I had never before heard or read about anyone else having alien classes as a child I remember having been given physics classes at the age of three or four. So our children are dumbed down to come back down here. From verbal language to telepathy, thought transplanting and mind melds, the new way to educate. This is a teacher that communicated to me her understanding of this. I could just go into their mind and absorb the concepts directly and there was thought transplanting going on. My bank of information was merged with theirs and they re-schematized their own knowledge systems accordingly. 
Ancient symbols hold the conceptual keys that trigger within the observing mind without the teacher being present. These are the new kids, and this is how they're going to learn, and that's why they don't fit in with the way that we educate now. When you've got a 10-year-old that told me that he went to his teacher and told them that they teach in a linear fashion, but he thinks in spirals, which told her. They are teaching me so I can teach the adults. Kathy, nine years old from Northern Europe. Everything is possible, we just need to believe it. The light orbs are sent here to protect us. My little brother has a blue orb to protect him. And she said something really interesting to me. She said in the next five years from 2012 to 2017, she said is going to be a very crucial time in human evolution. I am here to help my family wake up. Everyone is sleeping. 50% of the people on the planet are starseeds, but many get lost. Only 20% will remember who they are. Why don't they listen? Children are programmed. The teachers just push the keys. The stress of modern living extinguishes their inner core, their light. It's like a virus. We lose the knowledge we had in the beginning. And you've been hearing about this today already. The star seeds with multidimensional sight. This lady described her son looking, was, was sick, was looking into the air. She said, what are you seeing? He said, I'm seeing my blue energy body. Um, there are um, blocks here that have made me sick. In a couple of days, they will be gone. Unfortunately, I'm not sure of how much I can show you of this, um, but I'll give you a little bit of a taster because um, I would like to show this. I'm going to have to speed it through. This is eight-year-old Paul, how he was educated on the craft with school friends and non-humans. Yes. Could you say a little bit about that again? Sometimes when I go up on the craft, my friends are actually in, so my friend, my school friends, are in pods, or they're around in a circle with other beings, and me, and we're doing complex maths or learning about history. Okay, so sometimes that you're there learning things with, and, and the school friends that you actually see there, um, those particular school friends, do, do, they, do you ever talk to them about this or, or discuss it with them? I did once, but mum kind of went crazy. I tried to help them more, she said no, no. Just because I didn't want you to be labelled as someone that might be a little bit different and be treated differently than other children. Not because I didn't believe you, but because I didn't want you to be treated differently. Because some kids don't, and a lot of people don't understand the things that are happening to you. Because you don't really understand yet a lot, do you? Mm. We're still finding yeah. out a lot. So mum, that's why. Okay, so mum's actually trying to protect you from, yeah. from possible problems with, with that. That's fair enough. But I remember you saying to me that also you were not sure that they would remember, even though you remembered. Do you remember you saying that to me? You weren't yes. sure. And when you were on uh, talking about the pods, can you say a little bit more about what they were like? They were like an oval. Like his head, over like his head. Okay. Like that kind of over. Yeah. And we were inside them, we couldn't move, and there was this big liquid around us. And what was the liquid like? What did it feel like? Did it feel like water or something different or something um, like jelly or something like that? What, what did it feel like? Something not water, not like water and not like jelly. Okay. Was yes. it sort of in between or? You know, what did you feel like with it? I so, couldn't move. You just, it, so it kept you still. Okay. And when you were aware of that, what were you feeling? Was was it scary or...? or, or... I just thought it was a dream. Oh, so it, it felt like a dream to you. Okay. And could you see through out, out through the, the pod that you were in? Could you see anything? Um, a little bit, so mm. I could see through the rest I couldn't. Okay, and could you see any uh, shapes or any, any form outside or anything like that? Kind of like these. Like these, and what are these here? Oh, eyes. So like, you could see eyes, could you? No, these ones, they're heads. Oh, these ones, they're That's heads. the um, left side of it and that's the right side of it. Okay, 
and so you could you could see these what, what these are are like heads yes okay so you could see heads through the pods that yeah. you were in as well yeah. through and you see that that much out of it okay okay so on this page for example have you got anything you'd like to say about what what you've got on this page that you've drawn what is this here a ship Okay, and is this a, a ship that you've you've seen? Ship I've been, ship I've seen, and ship that I've been on. So you've been on this ship. Yes. Okay, and do you remember how long ago you were on that ship? Can't remember. I drew. What about this here? That's to give you a bit of an idea of how he articulates it. He also told me that he used his brain waves in this group of other children that from, were from school, but also children that he said were not human, with bigger eyes, he knew they weren't human, human with bigger eyes, and how they manipulated things in the air with matter. So I'm taking it one step further now. I've got half an hour to um, cover this, and I, I want you to hear a little bit more about the cosmic agenda from Lee's perspective. So I asked um, the scientist from uh, the, the land of the Northern Lights, as she told me to describe it, um, and this is her understanding of activation of our DNA, the high frequency people and the low frequency people, and soul choices is how she understands it. She's had interaction with a number of different beings. Her whole family she describes as being part Asperger's, part, letter pe um, part ADHD. They've all seen the beings and experienced things. She says, I think the increased resonance and frequency from both space and the earth is pushing the DNA into some sort of three-dimensional configuration so that dormant genes in the so-called junk DNA are aligning, like a time-activated evolutionary step controlled through DNA. DNA being the crystalline formation with an encoded message aimed to speed up evolution. However, the biocontainer is one of three parts influenced by the two other parts, mind and soul. The soul is the energy container, which moves from body to body between lives, dimensions, and worlds with frequencies that have a huge impact on DNA. The soul provides the life force and the data bank, and this main control sends frequencies, signals, programmed photons, electrons, gamma rays to help you carry on your mission and evolve. Not everyone will choose to upgrade, so there will be high-frequency people and low-frequency people, and your lifestyle will either enhance the frequency or lower it. Very interesting understanding. Um, right, I'm nearly there. This young lady again is talking Comparing about the cosmic well, agenda. Let's just say this mm. is the normal DNA chain. We're, we're like down here. Mm. Whereas these guys are sort of like above middle. Mm. So they're getting there mm. slowly. But mm. yeah, that's the sort of line that we're, we're getting to. So in terms of you coming to the planet and doing what you're doing, does this mean that we're actually in a transition to another level in yes. terms of our own evolution. Exactly, yes we are. We are actually, uh, Homo Nobis are actually, uh, they do multiple jobs, mm. but the main job is to make sure the human race survives. Mm. Um, they, and they know, like the ETs know, we are, humans are in great peril. Mm. And they're doing everything they can in their power to prevent destruction, mm. whether it be ourselves or plants or, or everything. Mm. So, they send us to make sure, like, you know, to do, like, you know, try and wake them up through your drawings, through your music, mm -hmm. through politics, through all, mm -hmm. like, talks, all sorts mm -hmm. of things, you know, find out telepathically, mm -hmm. lay lines, read it, read people's mm -hmm. minds, you know, just, just find out what's going on. But deep down, we, we are trying to also, at the same time, we're trying to push from Homo sapien mm -hmm. to Homo noictus. Mm -hmm. So it's pushing up as well. So we, mm. so we have the next generation of humans, because everybody um, born above the year 2001, 2000, mm. is a homo noictus. Mm. They are, like it's already here, there's no, no mm. way to it. And that's why children are mm. incredibly important to homo, um, homo novices, because we, not just because of course they're children and they're mm. innocent, but they are literally the next mm. step. And mm. they will be able to do things that homo sapiens will never be mm. able to do. And they will know things mm. that Homo sapiens never dreamed of. Mm. And it's just, uh, and that's why they're so important because they are going to save, they're going mm. to be the future and they're going to, they're going to help. Mm. They're going to, they're the ones who are going to open up to ETs, mm. open up to all of this. Mm. And so it, that's why they're so important, mm. you know. And it's, it's, it's 
huge. <laughs> mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And uh, another thing, um, they, Holonoictus, mm. they do not actually fully function, they do not fully awaken until they hit the pubescent years, mm. which just so happens to be around the time when our first contact is supposed to happen. So around oh. 2013, 2012. So your sense is that this is a crucial yes. next few years. Everything is coming yeah. together. I, I mean, yeah. like I knew there were certain things happening. I, don't, mm. I knew that was coming together, but I had no idea that everything mm. that we were doing is literally equaling mm. up to that. The amount of planning that the ETs mm. have done is just incredible. It's like mm. I, I can't even organize my soft draw. It's mm. just like so much. Mm. You know, it's just, mm. oh, it's just so you get a real sense of the immensity oh, of what is being I, done on all those other levels. Yeah, it's just, I I try to try to imagine, but the thing mm. is like, okay, you're just a conduit, you're not there yet, mm. you have, you still have a lot to learn. I, mm. I, I may know a lot compared to some, but mm. I don't know everything. And I'll freely mm. admit, I know like a thumb, like mm. a finger comparing mm. to everything. Mm. I just barely know it. Mm. So, yeah. One of the things that I'm very grateful for, and I I think she's quite an incredible young lady and what she's saying is really interesting because I get this kind of corroboration time and time again. I just find that she explains it in such a beautiful way. It gives you a sense of the people that I'm meeting and the way they describe this. And you can make up your own mind how you wish to uh, um, believe or what you wish to believe. One of the interesting things for me um, that I really want you to be aware of is that I actually was part of a... Um, a thesis with um, Simon Harvey Wilson. It was all on the comparisons between shamanism and abductions. And what was fascinating that Simon Harvey Wilson, who sadly isn't with us anymore, a beautiful gentleman um, from Western Australia, what he discovered through working with my clients um, and uh, his understanding of shamanism, shamanism was this, that the abductions demonstrated amazing parallels between shamanism and encounters. What the, the shaman has to do is transcend fear to operate in a multidimensional space. It's transcend human fears. Exactly the same thing seems to be necessary when you're having encounters with um, whether or not it's extraterrestrial or interdimensional beings. Healing abilities, present and past lives with ETs, all seems to be part of the same experience, whether it's through a shamanic opening up or an encounter with telepathic abilities and changes in perception. So I just really call the UFO encounter really a modern day shamanic wake up call. But let's get back to the children. This is a drawing by a young lady, um, five year old, oh sorry, six year old in Sydney. And uh, her, her um, father actually has written a book about his experiences. But what was interesting is talking about the new earth. And this little girl who was only five at the time said all the kids will be taken to the new earth and he said I named some stars and she said we don't call them those names but the doctors were these ones here she called them the doctors and she said um, this is one of the beings um, that she interacts with and when they bring me back I am sad new earth from a young uh, little uh, five-year-old little girl the mother sent me this script with a planet and she showed me Dolores Cannon's um, some of the, the script in Dolores Cannon's book. One, I th I'm not sure which one, it might have been Convoluted Universe. And she said that what fascinated her was when she asked her daughter what this was, the daughter said, it's the new Earth and it's in a different galaxy and not everyone will go there. People don't know about this, it's a secret. Very, very interesting, this is coming up. And now I want you to just hear how one young lady, a seven-year-old, describes how some children, or some of us maybe, are going to this new earth. Listen to the way that she describes it, because that in itself, whatever you make of it, is a very, very fascinating. Now I'm going to talk about the, um, the new earth that we, that we are going to go in on. No, we are going, um, a pinky tea said it's perfectly going to be perfectly fine. It, no one's going to get hurt or anything because we're going in these bubble kind of jelly things. So whenever you put your hand in it, it would like you're putting through your finger through jelly. And if you break through it, then it would just come back again. 
Um, so we would go in them to, we might, they might show us around like there's the pinky T planet, there's um, Venus and all the, of the other planets and the planets that we can't see and so um, yeah and so we will go to the new earth and we will we are going to the new earth and then we are going to come back one day when we so we um stay we might go to the new earth and get some telepathic um, magic or stuff and then we will come back to earth and just change all of the stuff that was poisoned and stuff yeah. isn't it interesting the way she describes it again you can make of that what you will right this is an information download from someone who um, I think is really fascinating because this is a scientist who told me this he said the downloads felt like a rush of energy combined with fragments of information in picture form or word senses given telepathically. I learned negative energies have man manipulated me and those around me since childhood. They use human emotions by manipulating energies using specific types of orbs. Emotions were bred into humans for the purpose of control. There's a game afoot. We're strong and some forces are afraid of what we can do. We are the binder of all races with our evolution and raising our conscious awareness. We will, we will take every species with us as they are bound to us spiritually and genetically. Their energies in the form of DNA are spliced throughout our own genome. We are the hive, we are the collection. It is from us that all, all will evolve. We are being held back by those who enjoy power and the ability to control as they know that once we drag them into the next density consciousness vibration, whatever you want to call it, they must relinquish the power and become part of the oneness, part of all that is. They cannot remain cut off from spirit for this is what they desire. This is what we're here for. It is simply that we are designed in the beginning by those who wish to align this universe with the light. It's a unique experiment, a research project, if you like. Each one of us is here at this time and aware of their bigger picture have chosen to participate in the game. Now, again, all I'm doing is giving you snippets of information that different people are feeling about the bigger picture. What you make of it and what resonates with you is entirely up to you. This wonderful drawing here is by a young man who believes he's from Octaurus and he communicates with light beings and technologies, resonating, he said, at pure light and technology of crystalline generators, which he says raised the vibratory level of the crystal world uh, by crystals around a pyramid. There's a lot more with the pyramid and what he's saying about what can be achieved in the pyramid shape and with the crystals. But what I want to play you is um, what we would call a hyper language or light language. Many people around the world that have come out with different languages, some of them know what they are, and they often call them light languages or soul languages. This particular language here, I, um, again, is uh, again from the person's understanding, um, more of their connection to their, their family, but all of them are acting as triggers. Kia ya to kia hana na ha to ni ana na nululu ki he ya na 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 la to ki hana na ta la ti ti ala ta a kali ti ta la ti hana na tu ko to ni ya ya ko i ta a tu ki na na la to i a ya no no ni na 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 lo ko he na na la to la ti. It's very interesting because I've heard some that are very very similar. And I will play you another one in a minute. But this young man, who's a teenager, you think would be into his iPad and um, looking at the prettiest girl down the road, is drawing symbols like this and images like this and building things like the, the, crystal, uh, the, the pyramid. 16-year-old, um, very, very unusual in our terms for a 16-year-old boy to be interested. Only I've met other teenagers interested in, in or doing similar things. But let's look at what does it really mean. This physicist looked at the images from Deborah Lapatina from the US, and this is what he said. Many of these glyphs are actually formulas on their way to forming matter. And this is how she describes it. Like formulas and cosmic language transmissions, it's hard for me not to sing as singing the frequencies is an integral part of the transmission. These languages carry billions of bits of information in a bridge format. Human language is linear. 
Speaking, singing, light language feels spiral and wave-like. What did the ten-year-old say? Sensation of being awash with layers of knowing that is understood but cannot be articulated in a linear word string. Advanced beings use telepathy or direct thought transference. Just hear a little bit of how she does one language. That's just one example of a number of languages that she speaks. So let's look. What does it really mean in terms of us trying to understand what's going on? DNA can be re reprogrammed by human speech. I've talked about this before, where these two scientists work with linguists and, what, and uh, molecular biologists, embryologists, and lingu linguistic experts. And they found that junk DNA was not redundant. But not only that, the structure and logic to it was like a biological language and reveals that codons actually form words and sentences just like human language. It's conceivable, they say, that DNA grammar itself serves as a blueprint for the development of human speech and that codons of DNA string can be rearranged reprogrammed by human speech if modulated on the correct carrier frequencies. Spoken language can be modulated to the carrier wave with the same reprogramming effect. So we know that certain types of human language can actually alter and change or switch on or switch off part of DNA. So if we go into perhaps the mindset of our, um, the star beings, the, the, the otherworldly visitors, what are the, the star languages doing, I wonder? What are they about? Certainly when people hear this, many of them have felt different. And I had one nurse actually tell me by hearing one of these languages, immediately she had to get paper and she starts writing a script that she'd never done before. So something is being triggered and maybe changed on a deeper level perhaps that we're not aware of. So I wonder how many of you will feel differently now. And here we go. If DNA can be influenced and reprogrammed by words and frequencies, and if DNA is not just responsible for the construction of our body, but as they believe, data storage in which communication follows the same rules as language and just requires the right frequencies to be reprogrammed, is it possible that the star languages they call light languages or universal languages, the new frequencies, which may also reprogram or alter human DNA as human language appears to do? And a little bit more, I'm rushing through this final bit here. This lady from Northern Europe contacted me. She said your child, she was told by a voice when she was pregnant with her daughter, Kathy, a voice told me my children are not mine. They belong to no one. My daughter gets important messages in ET languages. Remember, she's nine. I showed her your presentation when the lady does healing and writes in ET languages. And my daughter responded in joy and excitement. She knows what I've written. My daughter has helpers who guide her and teach her. They're here to help humanity with the awakening. Kathy told me, we all originate from Dayland. Dayland is where the light lives. There is a being which has no gender I call an ultra-terrestrial and where light and love and the angels live. My guide, she said, Imoko is blue with no hair or ears, human eyes but bigger. The green being is male. She's got the drawing there. She does the scripts. And she said, my friends are here all the time. It's dangerous to come and help here because memories can be deleted at birth by education, also by birth, by education and drugs. This is a nine-year-old. My nine-year-old has healing abilities, speaks healing words in ET language to purify water. It tasted different after this. She says the languages are from a place outside of the universe. And interestingly, we know a little bit about water now, don't we? Children who can heal with water with star languages. I asked the scientist, in Northern Europe, she says, I have no problem with that. The spiral formations I've been working on with my water research are loading energy back into the water and helps healing, recharging, strengthens the energy field and the aura, whatever it is pointed at. Rightly used, it could be bliss for humanity in rebuilding our earth. Healing works on a cellular level, whether you believe it or not. The healing from my hands affected the protein binding to a gene P53, which plays a role in turning genes on and off, and we all know about Masaru Emoto, 
and Messages in Water, where he shows that crystal uh, water can be changed by not only music, by prayer um, and language, but also by intent. So it's really interesting that we're finding this about how important water is, and we are, after all, 50 to 70 percent 75% water. If star language frequencies can alter the nature of water, what effect may that have on the human body or even DNA when it is spoken? DNA transmits information to our consciousness because they found that it creates disturbing patterns in a vacuum producing magnetized wormholes, microscopic equivalents of the so-called einstein rosen bridges in the vicinity of black holes. In other words, instant information through time and space and explains phenomena such as precognitive insights, clairvoyance, intuition, telepathy, past lives, remote acts of healing, etc., etc. So there's a lot going on in the quantum universe. And some of you have may have seen um, Rochelle on one of my DVDs where she's healing with sound. Again, it, sound keeps coming up. So what's the evidence that there may be other things helping this upgrade? Mitz Batros, who's a scientist, author of Solar Rain, is evidence that sun produces charged particles affecting humanity. Solar cycle 24 has begun. The sun's activity is 50% stronger than cycle 23. This wave affects not only the planet, but the human body's magnetic field and human emotions. Batros believes that the magnetic influence of the sun will usher what's described by our ancient ancestors as the transition beginning a new state of being. Humans evolving into Homo, Net from, into Homo Noeticus to Homo Novus is really what Lee is talking about. And, and for me, um, that's a very interesting one because she, again, if I've got time, I will quickly show a little bit of what she has to say about that. We're almost at the end. Okay, so what is this all about? Communication with our galactic neighbors and interdimensional intelligence involved. Multidimensional education by numerous non-human intelligences, both, of, uh, both in the physical, contactee, spacecraft, out-of-body, astral encounters. Downloads of compressed data in the form of information, music, art, star languages, crop circles, the sightings, these can at times be encounters. When you see in a craft, there's sometimes a download, whether you're aware of it or not. Past life recall to assist understanding of our star heritage healing codes, frequencies to activate DNA, and biological systems, frequencies to assist with the human upgrades via many planetary bodies, the gradual intergenerational upgrades in humans with expanded awareness, homo noeticus, to teach the older generations how to remove old programs and expand consciousness and understand the true nature of who we are and what our potentials are in our multidimensional reality. And I'd like to end with someone I've had a great deal of respect for, that I met... Um, a number of times now, but the very first time I met him was in Brisbane in, uh, I think, yes, it was 1998. And he was wonderful in the sense that he, he gave the package, not just bits of it. And actually, it was the mandate that I decided to use whenever I do presentations is, you know, try and draw a, a broad brush and everybody else can start filling it in however they wish to. But one of the things that he admitted to, and this is the first time in recent years he's done that, was that he had been on a craft for six weeks and he was shown the future. And he said this, we have power we haven't dreamed of. Homo sapiens have a unique genome of 12 different species. Higher cultures have intervened and we're going to be transformed into a new species. I have been shown the future and it is glorious. And with that, one other thing I'd like to say, and I've mentioned her before, wonderful artwork by Jean-Luc uh, Jean Bazzoli in Hawaii, who allowed me to use this beautiful picture of the new, the new human. This is what an experiencer I've known uh, many years now actually said to me, and I think it concludes really well. I can only come to the conclusion we are becoming conscious co-participants in our own evolution. And with that in mind, they had better give us a brochure which is, I guess, what they are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary, for finishing right on time.